Hi everyone and welcome to Name Heroes VPS Hosting. Uh, in this video tutorial I want to show you how to add websites to your VPS, your virtual private server. Uh, if you've been following along on our blog at namehero.com slash startup, then you know we're doing a course called VPS Hosting 101. The purpose of this course is to teach um, our customers how to better use their VPSs and also to teach those that are beginners to VPS hosting, those just getting started with it, um, how simple and easy it is to use. Uh, I know me personally, I've always used a VPS or a dedicated server to host my websites. Much of this is because I like to have root access and I like to use SSH for almost everything that I do. I also, um, being an entrepreneur since the late 90s, I like to only have my websites on the server. That way for security and for scalability that it's just my sites, it's no one else's. Um, we see a lot of entrepreneurs nowadays that want to have this, but they're a little intimidated by um, the process of setting it up. So that's the purpose of this course. If you're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook, uh, feel free to go to our blog at namehero.com startup, and you can sign up for the course. It's free, and um, they'll break down all these videos in an um, easy step-by-step -step manner. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna, if you want to follow along, you can. Um, I'm going to go into my Name Hero account. So I log in by hovering over this here and clicking log in. I'm already logged in, so I'm going to be there. Um, but this is what our dashboard looks like. And so now I want to go into uh, my VPS where I can add my, my website. So after we order our VPS, and if you've been following along, you know we selected our package, we deployed the server, and then we registered our name servers. Well, of course, after that, we want to start adding websites to our VPS. So we're going to click on Cloud Web Hosting, and then we're going to click on our VPS, which ours is right here, the Hero 2 Gigabyte is the one we are demonstrating with. Um, and once we do that, this is the main control panel for the VPS. You can see we can do everything in here from um, starting the server to shutting it down um, and to getting into Web Host Manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Login Details and I just want to copy my password and then click on Web Host Manager where I can enter my password. Now if you're clicking directly from here, it's going to say it's not private. Well, it is private. This is using the IP address which doesn't have an SSL certificate on it, um, but it is our server. So we're going to proceed and we're going to enter root as the username and then our password and log in. Okay, so this is Web Host Manager, and if you've been a reseller web host before, or if you've used Web Host Manager, it's the same on a VPS as it is a reseller account, um, but you just have more options, and you can see on the left here all these different options you have. Uh, most of them you don't have to worry about though, they're just kind of there and if you need help our team can help you, but most of the time you don't have to use a lot of these. Um, but right now we're going to look for create, so I just like to type in create and you can see create a support ticket or create a new account. Um, create a new account is what we're wanting to do here. Um, and this is a screen that you use to set up domains um, on your VPS. So if you are a web host, then you could add your customers this way, or you could use WHMCS to automatically do it. But if you're just a webmaster and you want to add your websites, this is where you go to do it. So I'm going to add a domain that's already in my uh, Name Hero account so I can show you how we change the name servers as well. So the domain that I'm going to practice with here is called keydiets.com. So I'm going to enter that. Um, it automatically generates a username, and I personally like that feature, but if you want to customize it, you can. It doesn't make a difference. Now, this is going to be the username that you log into cPanel with, or if it's for a customer, it's the cPanel login the customer is going to use. It's also going to be for your main FTP account. Um, so I like to say, you know, make it something that's not too long, but also, um, you know, you might want to, you, you can add a number in here. Um, you're not allowed to add any special characters, though, um, in, but adding a number can make it a little bit hard to guess. I'm going to click Password Generator. I always like doing this um, just because I know it's a secure password. I know it's completely randomized. Just make sure you do write that down or copy it into a file. Um, email address. This is the email address in case this user gets locked out of cPanel, how you reset it, or also you'll get important notifications about this user. Um, if it's just one of your sites, you can leave it blank, which is what I'm going to do. Next is the package. Um, we, um, we covered already how to add a package inside of here, so if you want to use that package that we created, you can select it. The good thing about a VPS is if we don't want to use a package and we just want to select our options manually, we can click this. And um, we can either create a new package with these options or just select these. 
Personally, I like to manually select it because if it's for my, if it's one of my websites, I want everything to be unlimited. You know, I want it to have the full resources of the VPS. Um, so disk space, I'm going to do unlimited, bandwidth unlimited, everything unlimited. So you can see I want everything unlimited. I don't want any limits. Next is dedicated IP. Um, you can see this server comes with one additional IP address. So if I wanted to use that for this domain, I could. Um, I'm not going to. Now, if you want to order more of these at Name Hero, that's very affordable. It's $29.95 a year per IP. So that equals out to about $2 a month, um, a little bit, um, $2.50 a month, I guess. Um, but still, it's a you know, really good rate there. And, and we see a lot of times people that will do dedicated IPs for email redundancy as well as um, it keeps people from doing like back searches and stuff on the IP. Um, so normally if you, if you know you need it, then you, then you um, will get it, but most of the time you don't, don't need that. Next is shell access. I like to keep this off. Um, I only like to use shell access um, with my key, which if you watch my security video on a VPS, then that's only how I like to access. And I don't like to give individual accounts shell access. If you're a hosting company and you have customers, you can give shell access to your, your users, but you'd like to really know who they are. Um, make sure they're not up to anything um, bad. CGI access, of course I want to have CGI access. That's for um, scripts to execute. The cPanel theme, the Paper Lantern's the only one installed, so if this cPanel had multiple themes, then I could choose one of those. I speak English, so that's what we're going to use. Next is reseller settings. If this is going to be a um, reseller, so for example, if you want this user to be able to create additional cPanel accounts, you can make him a reseller. Um, and then if you do, you can make the account own itself. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm just creating this cPanel. I'm not going to make him a reseller. The DNS settings, uh, DKIM and SPF, these are for email deliverability, and this will automatically create those records to um, increase your email delivery. Uh, just leave those, leave those default because that will you know, keep you from having to create them. Um, use the name server specified at the domain registrar. Um, this was actually gonna put the, um, if you're using a third party DNS such as Cloudflare, um, you, could, you, you could pull in from the ones in the registrar and that will put that in the zone file. So this is gonna assume that you're not gonna use your own DNS on this server. Um, I am, so I'm not gonna click that. And then um, override any existing DNS zones for the account. If I already had a DNS zone for this website, I'd wanna overwrite that, but I'm not going to. Um, we can see our name servers are ns1.namehero.org and ns2.namehero.org. And again, I have a video that shows how to set those up. Okay, mail routing settings. Um, it defaults here to local mail exchanger, and this just means that you're going to be using the email on the server. Um, there's backup, remote, or automatically detect. Um, you can use automatically detect uh, if you'd like. Um, local is the default, but it just means that you're going to be controlling the mail on the server. Okay, that's all the options. Down here, you're going to see an advertisement for WHMCS. So um, that's what that is if you see that. I'm going to click no thanks. Click create. Okay, now it's created our um, cPanel account. So now keydiets.com has its own cPanel. If I go to list accounts, so I'll just type in, whoops, I'll start typing in list, and I can click it. And you can see I've got namehero.org set up, but now I have keydiets.com set up. So for my temporary um, use, I can click this, and this is a preview link. This is a preview link of what the um, domain is going to look like once it goes live. Um, but I need to update my name servers for key diets. So I'm going to go back over to Name Hero, and I'm going to click on Domains and My Domains. Now, again, this domain is registered with us here at Name Hero. Um, so because it is, I can easily um, modify the name servers. If your name's registered somewhere else, GoDaddy, what have you, um, you can go in there and uh, modify it accordingly as well. So I'll click on Key Diets. Just one second while it pulls up here. Um, but as I said, if you're using a third-party DNS provider, you can. Um, but this is going to assume that you're going to use the DNS on the VPS. So I'm going to click Name Servers, use Custom Name Servers, and you can see I've got some old ones here. So I'm going to enter the name servers to our VPS. So ns1.namehero.org and ns, ns2.namehero.org, and I'm going to change them. And then I want to sit and make sure I get the um, success message. I don't want to exit this page too soon. Change successfully. Okay, so now keydiets.com um, is on our VPS. And right now if we go to it, it might not come up. It might 
Yeah, it did. Okay, so that's a rare case. Uh, sometimes this process is called DNS propagation. And when you change a name server on, on a domain, it could take anywhere up to 24 hours, depending on where you're located in this world, to propagate. Now, since I had not visit, visited keydiets.com in about a week um, from this computer, it propagated almost instantly. So this, this might be the case for you. Um, but if you're definitely, if it's an existing website, you know, you want to allow a full 24 hours for that to begin to propagate. Um, but you can see it's all set now. Um, now Key Diets is ready to go. Um, if you want to check uh, to make sure that your DNS is set up correctly, we have a, a website called dnshero.com. And I've got, let's bring it up here. And um, this is a tool powered by us here at Name Hero. And we can enter our domain, Key Diets, let me erase all the HTTP, and run a report. And this just makes sure that all your um, DNS records are correct. Uh, so you can see that um, there's nothing red here, so we're, we're all fine. Um, DNS um, parents sent glue. Um, I, we can ignore this here because we know we set those up correctly at the registrar once we um, registered these name servers. So they, it is set up correctly. Unless you see red, then you don't need to worry. If you see a little yellow, um, most likely it's a false positive um, as long as you're not seeing red. Red's bad, but um, you can see everything is good on this. And so um, now we're, you know, it's propagated. So we're now ready to create our site. And um, if we want, the good thing I like about Webhost Manager is you can click on cPanel and single sign-on right into cPanel. So you can see right inside of here is, is a cPanel for this user. So if I wanted to perhaps go install WordPress, I could go down here and um, install WordPress um, right here in the auto installer. I click install now. And then I can just walk through this process um, step by step and actually install and, and have WordPress on my, um, on my domain. And uh, since it's propagated, I guess I can just go ahead and demonstrate this. Since it's propagated, this is going to show up. So I, I like to remove this in directory so it's on the actual base root of the domain um, and so it's not in a subfolder. Now I scroll down here, I always want to change this. If nothing else, change the admin username and password. If I had a nickel for every website that gets hacked because they use admin and password, I would be a very rich man. Um, you always want to change this stuff up. Um, so I go down here and you can choose the themes in here if you like, if you'd like a professional theme. If not, it's going to use the WordPress default, which is that's what we're going to do here. So we just click install now. And the installation package cannot be found. Um, so we probably need to configure a little bit more on the auto installer on here. So I'll have to uh, troubleshoot that. Um, yours should not say that. It should automatically install um, on the domain there. You should, you should go ahead and install um, WordPress. So if you have any questions with that, let us know. Um, like I said, that um, it's missing the um, WordPress installation package. So again, I'll have to troubleshoot that to see what's going on. Um, but that's, that's um, you know, should not happen in your case. But that's how quick and easy it is to add an account to your VPS, to add another website. Um, and you know, you can add unlimited as long as if we go to disk, show current disk usage, this is gonna show you how much disk is used. Use seven gigabytes, available 20. So you can see we've got plenty of room. I mean, you can create as many accounts until you use this disk space up, and then at which time you can upgrade. Um, so really, you know, you can have potentially hundreds of websites on your VPS, not just, you know, a couple. Now, there is one other limitation, is this VPS only has two gigabytes of RAM. So you probably wouldn't, if you wouldn't want to add a bunch of sites unless um, they're not popular at all. Um, I, I normally like to recommend the two gigabyte server for um, development purposes, not really um, so much for production. So let us know if you have any questions adding your websites. Um, it's pretty simple and straightforward, um, especially if you're used to Web Host Manager, but there is, um, you know, you have a lot more flexibility than you do with the reseller account. Um, so thanks a bunch for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the reseller hosting 101 course.